I'm Neil Evans with the Harkin Tech team. We're here on a CNC 29, replacing the Traveler with the new Harkin River Replacement Traveler Kit. What we're going to do right now is go through some of the hardware that's needed and tools needed to make this installation happen and return this traveler to a functioning piece of hardware. Uh, first, we're going to start with our Harkin Box Traveler Kit. This is one of five options that Harkin offers. This is part number 1655. This is the perfect unit for this boat. Along with that, we'll need a piece of Harkin track, in this case, mid range track, uh, 27 millimeter track. Uh, in this case, this is the high beam track, so it's R27HB. Uh, some of the tools we'll need is we'll need a hacksaw to cut the track possibly to link, a drill, drill bits, new fasteners for the new track, some screwdrivers, pliers, and so forth to remove the old track and install the new track. Um, in this Traveler, with the Traveler track comes a set of bolt slides. These bolt slides are essentially large flat washers that are used to slide into the track profile and allow us to use any hole spacing we want. The track itself, its unique shape, allows for us to use that. It captures the head, it gives a nice clean look at the top because there's no fastener holes to leak water through, and it allows us to use that existing hole spacing. Here's the bolt slide, here's the bolt together. The way it works is it simply slides into the track, the bolt slide into its own groove, then the head of the bolt slides into the track, bolts it so you don't have to have a second set of hands holding the bolt from the top. We'll just simply install the nut and we'll be on our way. Now that we've removed all the old fasteners, it's time to remove the traveler track. The reason I'm trying to make sure this is really, really clean is that so we don't have any high spots or leftover materials that possibly could cause a leak down the road. Now that we have the old Traveler track off and the area is clean, we're going to start to assemble the, the new Harkin system. First step, open up the box and get the components out. Remove the instruction manuals. Cut the wire ties. Slide the car on. No issues there. Slide our end controls on. No issues there. Here we have the really old system. It doesn't function really, even when designed to function. Here we have the new modern ball bearing carpet traveler system. Now that we have the track and the, the end controls out, we're ready to measure the track and possibly cut it if need be. Sixty two minus fifty nine and a quarter. Good 
Right now I'm just filling in the holes we do not need. We don't need to use every hole with the high beam track because the high beam track with its internal webbing and its height is strong enough that you don't need a hole every four or hundred millimeters. These are just trim caps. These just simply plug in the end of the track and help clean it up and prevent anything, dirt, debris, spiders from living in the end of the track. I put a little silicone on them just to help hold them in place. We're the, to the point where we're going to mount the track. So all our bolts are in, about in position. Our trim caps are in. We made sure to, that all our hardware was on top so that we didn't have to pull the track to reinstall the hardware. And we should be good to mount the track now. So here we go. all bolted down what we need to do is install the end controls so first off we're going to position the end control so it's right at the end of the track and then we're going to mark our hole the track has a nice center line on it so that you can tell where center is on the track and we'll drill the appropriate size hole what will happen is we'll be installing a 5 16 bolt through this that'll go down through and then we'll nut it, we'll put a nut on the back side to help hold it in place. If you want and you're careful, you can try to use the, the car as a start point. Just be careful not to nick it. Don't worry. Traveler lines cut. It's just a matter of, of simply reeving this up. We're going to reeve it up as a four to one. I'll also mention how you can do this as a three to one setup as well. Start with the first lead in. Around the control block on the car. Around the top shift. Now if we were going to do a 3 to 1, we would simply take the line and knot it off on this shiv, or if there was a becket here, dead end it on this becket. But since we're doing a 4 to 1, we're going to come through the other way, from the bottom up to the dead end on the end control here, which is integrated into it. And for this, you can either put a pre-splice line on here, or I'm just gonna tie a bowl in in here. I wanna tie it fairly tight to the, 
for the Beckett to allow for the maximum the maximum amount of travel. But at the same time, I want to leave it a little loose so that if the car does come crashing down, it does work as a little bit of a buffer. So now that the line is reeved, I'm going to simply run it to make sure that it goes down all the way. Once it's down all the way, we know that we're, we have done it. We finished the installation here, end controls are installed, car is installed, track is bolted down, bedded down. It took us about three and a half hours, four hours to do. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Again, if you have any other questions about this or any other product, feel free to contact us at any time. That's what we're here for.